Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Electric Productions. I'm Jay, and today we're going to take a look at Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity, or as I like to call it, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinitesimal. If you clicked on this video, you're either bored or more than likely one of three groups of people. The first group is people who simply love all things Marvel and or Capcom, and this game's only real drawing power for you is the inclusion of one or both of these universes. If this is the case, I highly recommend that you do just a bit of research and pick one game from Marvel and one from Capcom that interests your personal taste and style of games. Give both of them a playthrough and then make a pros and cons list for each game. Congratulations! You just made your own Marvel vs. Capcom, likely saved yourself a good bit of money, and probably had way more fun than those being disappointed by this game right now. The next group of people are those who love fighting games, and in particular 2D fighting games. If you fall into this group, then you probably either love complex competitive fighters, or flashy yet easy amateur fighters. If you enjoy complex, well-balanced, and diverse fighters, I highly recommend that you stop watching this video, make your way to the proverbial door, and never look back, as this fighter has all the complexity of a burnt piece of toast. There are a number of strong games in this category, and some quick research recommend the Guilty Gear X series and the King of Fighters series. I have personally also enjoyed the Blaze Blue series. If you fall more on the side of simple and flashy, then I still really can't recommend this title over earlier, and in my opinion, stronger entries into the series, specifically 2 and 3. Marble Countertops vs. Crapcom Infinitesimal is but a shadow of its former self, with a new coat of still drying paint and some glitter glued on for good measure. And this brings us to our third group of people interested in this title, and that is the die-hard fans of this series specifically. Now for those of us who grew up playing this in the arcade, on the Dreamcast and later on the next-gen consoles, and finally on our PCs, this game is going to leave a gaping hole in your heart and an ache in the pit of your stomach that no amount of overpriced DLC can soothe. That's because this game is not the Marlboro Man vs. Capsaicium 4 that we've been dreaming of, but nothing more than MVC 3.5 Cash Grab Edition. This game has more corners cut than the Pentagon, and has all the self-pride of a blobfish. And no matter how much you try to convince yourself otherwise, you're just too dang smart for your own good. The issue here really is the price. If the full game had dropped for $40 with no DLC being sold, this bitter pill would have been more like one of those hard candies that the elderly hand out. Not great, but at least it's not black licorice. However, at full price and with more DLC cost on the horizon than Kylie Jenner's net worth, this is an easy no for me right now. Don't misunderstand, I could afford to buy this game right now, just as a large number of you could as well. But when we hand over our hard-earned money for a game, we're making a statement. And that statement, like it or not, is that you support the game the way that it is, and that it's worth both your time and money. Essentially, you're giving the game your blessing. Mackerel vs. Cardstock Trinity does not live up to the expectation of most of its fans. And unlike other games where expectations have grown wildly out of proportion and deliverability, most fans would have been thrilled with just a graphical update, new levels, and a new roster of characters that match the depth and breadth of the former titles. I think most of us would have accepted the two-man rosters over three and the inclusion of the stone system just fine if those things I just mentioned were included. And while the game had some pretty good stages on display, the lack of strong voice actors, lackluster artistic work, and unforgivably svelte character roster offer a package that is simply not compelling enough to snake charm my wallet and included money out of my pocket. Marmalade vs. Capybara 4 The Finality is a game that I simply cannot support out of the gate, and while I refuse to be an early adopter when the game's whatever edition releases with all included DLC for $30 on a Steam sale, you know I'll be grabbing it up with the speed of Donald Trump's Twitter fingers. In closing, I want to point out where the devs went grievously wrong here, and that's confusing me, the consumer, with their parents. When we were kids, we would scribble together the most outlandish drawings, nigh incomprehensible to the human eye, and with pride in our heart and a kick in our step, we would bring said abomination to an unsuspecting parental unit for consumption. That parent would take said pile of crap and ooh and ah over it for a few minutes before relegating it to the fridge, where it would reside till forgotten and safely disposable. This game is the equivalent to that drawing. For a AAA title, it's poorly done, slapped together, and woefully lacking, and all around as disappointing as my last visit to the bathroom scales. Unfortunately for It's a Marvel vs. Capricorn the DLC edition, I am not the game dev's parents, and there is nothing easier than calling someone else's baby ugly. And in this case, I'm not just calling the baby ugly, but stupid, greedy, and lazy. I'm Jay from Electric Productions, and I look forward to seeing you on the next show.